Hey everyone, this is Chris. And Lorenzo. And welcome to our Best of Saturday series. Now that we have hundreds of episodes, we get a lot of listeners asking us where to start. So we'll be selecting some of our most popular episodes to share each Saturday from our years of podcasting. We hope you enjoy it. No role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, yesterday I was talking with a person at one of my client's offices and we were going over some kind of performance management topics about them and their people. And I noticed something that um, kind of troubled me a little bit. And I'm going to talk to you about it. And that's that this person seemed to have no shortage of complaints about the people who reported to him. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, when it started, I thought, you know, okay, every, every, I've always had somebody there's always somebody that you can you know complain about a little bit there's always somebody that that is like the thorn in your side or the person that you that you wish were different or that you you know isn't isn't doing enough bad stuff to get rid of but you're in the performance management process and you can tell they're not bought in and and they're never going to be bought in but but th- it seemed to be very common with this guy he used to, he, he seemed to have something negative to say about almost everybody that reported up to him and i got the impression quite honestly that he didn't like his people. <laughs> and and it got me thinking about something that I've, I've always believed to be true. And I quite honestly thought it was obvious to a lot of people, but maybe it isn't obvious. And that's the idea that in order to be a good leader, you have to like people. <laughs> and again, like I said, there might be somebody chuckling right now thinking that, well, that's obvious. Of course, I, I have, you have to like people. But it goes deeper than that. It's not just... You have to like people like, yeah, everybody has people in their life that they care about. Everybody has people in, in life that they're that they're close to. Um, if, you, if you've had certain employees that have reported up to you for years, maybe you've developed personal relationships and you talk about stuff that, that isn't work-related and you have that solid relationship and you like each other. I'm not talking about you have to like this person or this person or this person. I mean, you have to like people. You, you have to like being around people. You, you have to... If you you have to be the kind of person where if you find yourself at an amusement park for the day and you find yourself complaining about the line and complaining about the guy who's walking too slow in front of you and the person who's on the freeway complaining that they're driving too slow or that you know that you're always finding these little things of how the world is conspiring against you. If that's you, <laughs> you don't like people. You know that you don't like people. That's what I'm talking about, not the individual relationship. So I'm wondering, is is this? Am I in error in thinking this is more obvious than it really is? I mean, do you know people like this who uh, s- supposedly um, say that they are leaders of people, but they quite honestly don't like people? Um, yes. <laughs> and in, in, uh, it's, it's, it's hysterical because you're right. It, it sounds so simple and so silly, but it's very true. I, I think in my experience, what I have witnessed is, you know, people after maybe – a long career or being stagnant or having the same job for many, 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 many years, you kind of get to the point where you're over it, where the things that brought you joy or where you found yourself as a leader, you know, really enjoying your time developing people, helping people, supporting people after you've done it for so long, um, you you no longer, you know, that that's not, that's not an internal motivation for you anymore. And sure. then it just becomes a task, right? I, I think... The, the as you peel back the, the layers and what you're really talking about is that you have to find joy in in watching people succeed. You have to find joy in helping people learn something new. You have to find joy in learning about people and supporting them and, and creating connections with them. And uh, that that being kind of the idea of liking people is that you you enjoy the company. You enjoy being around you know, a team or, you know, being surrounded by your tribe. And, uh, and th- that type of feeling is the thing that as a leader, 
get you through the really difficult times of having to work through performance or having to work through difficult situations or having to work through challenges as an organization because at the core of who you are, you just like being around people that you can work with, that you can trust, and that you can help in their own development. Yeah, I mean, isn't isn't it an outlook thing? Like, meaning, isn't isn't it a perception thing? So, meaning, you, you what you're talking about basically is not allowing um, yourself to become cynical. You know, mm-hmm. not, not allowing the bad stuff to become what defines you, because there's no way to get rid of all of the bad stuff. There, you're, there's going to be stuff you have to deal with. There's going to be um, you know, taxing things that you have to deal with as a leader. And that's just the nature of of the business. But, but whether you allow that to sour your view of humanity or, Mm -hmm. or of people is is another thing altogether. So isn't it, aren't you talking about more of just, you know, taking the same set of data and interpreting it differently or allowing it to get to you differently? Or are you, are you talking about something different? No, uh, well, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you're you're right that it, that it can be becoming cynical over time and just kind of getting getting over it. But I think that you know who you are as an individual, like you you have to like people, as you're saying, like you have to enjoy just you know the the feeling of being around people um, and accepting the fact that within that you know group of people, you're going to have disappointment, you're going to have some stress, you're going to have you know things that happen in human to human interaction. And, um, it, you know, I, I would imagine that if you ran into this person and, and he, this, this guy said enough to make you go like, wow, you really don't like people. I would imagine <laughs> that what he was probably saying was very personal and, and, and was, was, was directed at, you know, maybe entire teams or individuals like of just like the, the overall negativity and the outlook that this person had on life. There was probably more to his comments and what he talked about um, to make you feel like, wow, like how, how are you a leader and you just don't like people? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm guessing some of it was probably rooted in um, trying to find reasons to explain away his lack of leadership or his failure of leadership. So mm. if you aren't a good, if you can't affect positive change among people and you don't know how to do that, it can be easy to say, well, the reason this person isn't performing well is because of inherent flaws they bring to the table, not because mm-hmm. I failed them as a leader, not because I've failed to train them or teach them or coach them, not because I've created an environment where my employees become disengaged. It's it's easier to say, I've done everything I've can, I, I can. The reason why this person is failing is because of things that I can't control. So I think part of it is rooted in in an inability to affect that change like like they want to. Mm-hmm. But but that can only go so far. There, there, there didn't seem like there was anybody who there were only positive things to say about. Even the people who were like the star players on their team, there, he found a way to 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 mitigate that that benefit or that the the positivity with something else, a little jab that gets thrown in there about what what they're not good at, and mm-hmm. and they didn't seem to be things that were really strongly correlated to the business. But rather, mm-hmm. they were things that were correlated to what seemed to annoy him, mm-hmm. you know. And that's that's what kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit on it. But I I actually heard a a term that is used a lot in cinema many years ago, and it seems to apply here. And the, the term is called sonder, S O N D E R. Have you ever heard that term before? Uh, yes, I believe it's about uh, like part players and and like the. Yeah, kind of like like you, like every like you are the star and everybody else plays a part, something like that. Right. Yeah. You 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 you're almost you're almost spot on. It, it Sonder is the the realization that you are only the star in your own show, but that everybody around you is the star of their show, and you're just a bit part in their show, and and their lives are just as rich and just as meaningful and just as as nuanced as yours, and hmm. and the moment you have the ability to realize that and to remember that the first of all the more empathetic you can become um the, the less the less egocentric you you become but i think it helps in the ability to like people and what i mean by that is when when you complain about a person or complain about something um or you give off the impression that you don't like people what you're doing basically is you're reducing a lifetime of experience to a singular action that annoys you. So the context is, I don't like this one thing. Not, okay, 
what is causing this person to do this thing? What has led to this point? And I think what happens is a lot of leaders, they see disengagement from employees that they truly weren't responsible for, that the employee brought it with them. The employee is cynical. The employee has never worked for great leaders. So they bring this baggage with them. And that baggage reinforces the cynicism that the leader already has. And instead of saying, all right, this is my opportunity to turn all that around and to make that employee think, oh, all these things I thought about leaders as a whole aren't necessarily always true. Instead, they allow those those things, that baggage to get to them, make them even more cynical. And what they end up doing is they they become self-fulfilling prophecies for both employee and leader. The leader is reinforced in thinking everybody sucks and the mm-hmm. employees reinforced at thinking all leaders suck. Mm-hmm. And and so that's what you end up happening, what, what ends up happening. So leaders can, if they like people, will approach that differently. They'll approach it from the standpoint of this person, whatever is going on in their lives, whatever they've brought with them to the table, I'm not going to take it personally because it's not directed at me. It's mm-hmm. just what they have brought with them. And if I get joy out of seeing people succeed and I want to see the smile on this person's face, I want them to look positively on me as a leader, then I know what I can do to turn that around to make sure that they're not uh, thinking those negative things anymore. And I and I prove it by my actions. Now, if I'm doing it and I can put my head on my pillow every night for two years and say, I've done this right, and they're still not changing it around, you got to get rid of them. You know, I mean, there are people out there who are just so dig- dug into the sand that they're unwilling to see the good in anything. And you got to move on from that sometimes. But uh, you don't start there. You start with doing everything you can to bring that employee along for the journey, and that will never happen unless you want to, it to happen. I think it's a great example. Like as you were saying this, I'm reflecting on my own leadership and conversations that I've had with with employees, and I think it it for me it boils down to like the idea of being a new leader um, in, in a, with a team or in a store or whatever. You know, I've, I've done that many times in my career, and a lot of times, you know, when you are walking into an environment. People have, you know, perspective to share with you. They have feedback. They have this is where this team is at. They have all these, you know, perceptions and perspectives and things they want to kind of fill your brain with. Um, and they are like, you know what, you you may have to go in here and get rid of a bunch of people. Like you hear that all the time. You have to turn that whole <laughs> team, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, a low performing team or a low performing, you know, store or organization, there can be this assumption made that it's just bad people, right? And so like, I, I love what you were saying because, my thought has always been, well, watch me take this quote unquote bad team and bad people and and drive these results with all the same names on 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 the roster, right? Because that actually proves my point, which is that it always boils down to leadership. It always boils down to making those connections, to 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 walk in with an open mind. Of course, I'm gonna take context, I'm gonna take perspective, I'm gonna listen to people that have been involved in the work or maybe can provide me with some 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 thoughts and some shortcuts of what I need to look at and look for or be careful of. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, exactly what you said, like, I, I want to sit down with them. I want to talk to those people that may have been labeled the negative or may have been labeled as disengaged. Uh, and I just want to talk to them. And, and, and if there's, uh, if that many times that conversation alone is a catalyst for for triggering change in their behavior, uh, but it also allows me to listen first um, and then provide perspective or my opinion, but also provide expectations um, and say, cool, if you know, if this is where you're at, and this is what you're telling me, and this is how you feel, you know, uh, you should never feel that way. Um, let I, I just got here, but let me apologize for that if that if that actually happened. Um, and and finally, if you're asking me to go in to do this, trust me as a leader that I'm going to go and do some of this work. But here's exactly what I need from you. And what can't happen is that I sit down with you again two weeks from now, and you're still just as negative, you still don't have solutions, and you're still not willing to put in the work as well. So now I, I think it's a great point when it comes to the, what kicked off the conversation, which is liking people. Because if you truly like people, you know you want to at least seek to understand and do some type of due diligence to, to figure that out and fix it for that person and fix it for that team versus just write them off and just assume that everybody is sucks and they need to go. And I'm going to go ahead and start fresh and start new. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is a two-way street, but I want to caveat that with saying more of the traffic flows from the leader than from than from the employees. 
So while it is definitely um, reasonable to expect the employees to bring something to the table, you as a leader have to be able to continue that course, even in the face of the employees not meeting you halfway for a lot longer than if you were the employee expecting it of a leader. Because at the end of the day, you're the one who is accountable to those business results at the end of the day. You're the one who maybe is in the career versus in the job. You're the one who uh, whose career advancement opportunities are probably more impacted by the success or failure of the business than that employee who is disengaged. So the bottom line is you have to be able to take it on on the chin and and move on and move through it. Uh, like I said, not for years and not for months. You got to be able to see something, but you have to understand that if an employee is 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 very far gone down that pathway, it might take some time for them to see your actions back up your words and often enough for them to not take it as um, just another, you know, this is temporary, it's going to fall back the way it was. Because if they're cynical already, that's what they're expecting from you. And you are you are in your body 24 hours a day, so you see all of your actions and you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. But let's say you only interact with that person once every week or once every two weeks. It's going to take a while before the body of evidence builds up in their mind for them to say, okay, maybe Lorenzo is different than the previous leaders. And maybe the things he's telling me in my one-on-ones aren't just blowing smoke. Maybe it's actually true. Yeah, no, it, 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 that's a great point. You know, I, I also, in full transparency, um, there are people that I just don't like, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. I, yep. I like people. Um, and I enjoy people, but there are people that I just don't like. They, they rub me the wrong way or, you know, I, I don't appreciate maybe the way they talk to people. I don't appreciate maybe the way that they always have a problem without a solution. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't appreciate the way that they don't assume positive intent or like, like there's just people that I don't like. Right. Um, but I also know as a leader though, it's my responsibility to look past that in those individual cases and, and continue to try to connect with that individual because as long as they're on the team, they're on the team. And as long as they're here and willing to put forth an effort um, as a leader, and kind of what you said, you know, it, it, it falls on the shoulder of the leader to, to step away from that and say like, hey, at the end of the day, I'm going to treat you with the same respect and consistency that I do with everybody else. Um, and I want to understand more and I want to be able to, you know, find out what I can help you accomplish so that we can be more productive together and we can, you know, progress this business. Um, even if at the end of the day, we will never hang out. And if I see you at the grocery store, I might go down the other aisle. You know what I mean? Like that, Mm -hmm. that can happen. Um, yet still be somebody who collectively as a leader really enjoys people and likes people. Yeah. I wonder if there's a, a pattern at all in terms of, you said there, there are some people you just don't like. I wonder if those people are the ones who just don't seem to like people. (laughs) <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, they don't like me therefore they don't like people right, don't, right exactly yeah. how can anybody not like you right all that ego right <laughs> absolutely all right and with that it is time for this episode's one minute hack the one minute hack all right so for this episode's one minute hack i wanted to do a little bit of self-reflection like i did earlier in the episode and and sit down with your uh, paper and pen and think about those individuals that may be on your team that you just don't like, that maybe they rub you the wrong way, you don't have the greatest outlook on them, you're not doing a great job of assuming positive intent, and I want you to write down those names, um, and then I went next to that, I want you to write down the value that they bring to the team, and what are the things that they do well. Now, if the answer uh, is the name, and then the second answer is nothing, um, then you need to have a whole different conversation. And that, the conversation with them still needs to be around minimum expectations, what you want in a work environment, and that this may not be the career for them. However, if you see that there are people on this list that you just don't like, how, but they bring a value, and there are things they do really, really well, which happens quite often, then I, would, I want you to challenge yourself to sit down with that individual and get to know them more and have some conversation and start that conversation off with recognizing them for the things that that they do well and then asking them what else they need to continue that work and to help provide um, that level of help, mentorship, or support to their peers in the business. I think by starting it this way, you will be able to break down some of those walls and you'll be able to have better conversations and you'll be able to ask them to deliver more. I think that's perfect. And I'll add one thing to it. And that's that if you've made your list, 
and you find yourself sh- having 80 or 90 percent of your people <laughs> on the list of people you don't like, yeah. then you might have to look in the yeah. mirror and 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 look at yourself as a person who doesn't like people. <laughs> right. I'll say write your name at the top and circle it. I think right. we figured out the problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and with that, it brings us to the end of another episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you guys next time.